Well, hey folks, how's it all going? Welcome back at old man. A lot of people have been waiting for this video. Everybody's asked me, what would you choose? These are both 22 inch grills. Would you choose the new Weber Master Touch Premium or the s, &S 22 inch kettle grill? Folks, this is kind of like a David versus Goliath story here. You know, you've got Weber, which just isn't the largest grill manufacturer in the United States. This is the largest grill manufacturer in the world. I mean, you go to any country in this world, you say Weber, and a guy would pick out, pull out his phone and show you a picture of his Weber. Uh, s and S, it's a family-owned business, folks. So this is going to be this is going to be interesting, uh, interesting comparison. And uh, you know, we're, it's David versus Goliath, folks. Keep on watching. All right, folks. One of the things that people ask right off the bat is, what's the price of these things? So the Weber. Now remember, this is the Master Touch Premium, not the regular Master Touch. Right now, Weber.com, it's going for three hundred twenty dollars. The SNS, SNSGrills.com is selling for 280. All right, so how do they compare in height? And you can see they're really, really close, but the Weber just a tad bit taller, maybe a half inch. The total height to the grade on both of these is, uh, you can see we've got right here, 32 and a half, but the uh, grade is about an uh, inch and a half lower than that. So we're right around 31, and the, uh, the SNS is right around 31 also, just a tad bit, like I said, about a half inch difference with the water being actually a little bit taller. Folks, if you want to do a leg extension on your Reverend Weber cattle, Tom Horseman of YouTube, I did a whole series that shows how to easily extend the legs on your, on your kettle grills. All right, the finishes on both grills, they're both porcelain enamel. Now, I have no way of measuring the thickness. Uh, a lot of times that's like paint, they measure it in mills. So I have no idea of knowing who's got the thicker porcelain enamel. Uh, whether it's s, &S or Weber, but they both appear to be just fine. I've had no issues with them, no chipping in delivery, and they, they appear like they're gonna last forever. All right, folks, one of the biggest differences just looking right off hand is obviously, the Sloan Sears got four legs, the Weber's got three legs. Uh, a bunch of other videos I've done on these. I've done an unboxing and assembly on both these grills. If you wanna check them out at Tom Horseman on YouTube. Also did a video on both of them where I, you know, it was a, I call it a questions asked, questions answered, ask yours. I'll, I'll leave the links down below if you wanna take a look at those. Um, the whole leg thing, I had no idea, no idea that Weber owned the patent on three-legged grills. So I, apparently that's what I'm being told is that's why it has three legs. Uh, the Solicitor people are saying, well, we put a shelf on ours. Uh, you know, having four legs is gonna be more stable. The debate will go on forever. And that's about all I'm gonna say about that. All right, so both these grills have something that the other grill doesn't that I wish that they both had. On the, on the Weber, it's that awesome hinge. Folks, uh, that is really revolutionary when it comes to a lid on a 22 inch kettle. It, it works phenomenally well. It holds itself up really nice. And then, like I said, it'll even hold itself open. And then when you get to a point, closes on its own. Really nice. And then on the slow ones here, it's the shelf. Yeah, that shelf is attached to the grill and it folds down. It's good for 20 pounds. And I wish, I wish the hinge was on that grill and I wish that shelf was on this grill. All right, staying on the outside of the grill, this is for like an eye grill. You can put your temperature holder probe on there. Uh, what bothers me a little bit about the Weber is that they give you this nice shelf to put like your eye grill but they don't give you a hole in the side of the grill. So you still got to run it through the lid, which is okay. But uh, eventually what that happens is it crimps, crimps and uh, it will ruin your cable eventually. So I, I just don't understand why they wouldn't have done something as simple as what they did on the s, &S grill. I mean, that's just a simple idea. Just put a little, and that's where you can put your temp rope through. And that way you don't have to worry about, you know, having your lid leak a little bit or, you know, crimping your cable to the point that it breaks. All right, on the s, &S they have a separate hole on the bottom. And, um, you know, whether it's called a smoke hole, that's what Justin, that baby back maniac is calling this. Uh, it's calling that smoke hole. But if you have one of those stoker units or you want to buy one that's PID controlled, you shut your all your other vents, leave your top vent open a little bit and put that in there. And uh, there's no drilling. A lot of people like to buy those, but on the Weber, you got to drill a hole and that bothers a lot of people. Doesn't bother me, but you know what? This is a nice little feature that doesn't really cost a whole lot to do. 
All right, so <laughs> you people are smart out there and I'm sure more than a few of you said, hey, when are you gonna talk about the lids and the differences of the vents? You can see the vent on the Weber is in the back and the vent on the slow and sear SNS grill is in the front. And you know, I, I, can't, I can't explain it forever. I, on the questions asked, questions answered video, I show different scenarios in where you, you can put your food in the middle by having your charcoal baskets on this side and then that side. And then this grill comes with, and I'll show it later, is a charcoal basket, a diffuser plate. The positioning of that vent works just fine. However, if you're using a Sloan sear on here, it, it doesn't work so well. And that would put your temp probe over the heat source, which doesn't work well at all. Now on the Sloan sear, you know, a lot of us has always said, and in the past, I've added vents and added temp probes so they're on the right side of my Weber kettle. And the Sloan sear, in my opinion, as far as doing indirect, put your food in the front where you want it. So, you know, I, we can argue that one too. I, I honestly believe Weber built this grill right here to not use the Sloan sear. That's my opinion. All right, so as far as stowing or when you're opening up your, your grill, uh, the lid obviously on the Weber's got a hinge. No problem there. Some people may, I've had a couple of people say what happens if, when it's windy. When it's windy, it's windy. Uh, don't leave it out in the wind, I guess. And the same thing goes with the uh, s and grill. They've got a lid bale there that holds it just fine. All right, let's talk ash ba baskets for a while, for a little bit here. I don't like, well, I don't like the way either one of them comes out there. You, you, you have to have your eyes and three points and you, you only have two eyes. So it's always hard for me to line up the uh, Weber basket when I'm getting in. I have no problem with the front here and then seeing that side, but then I have to kind of feel for the other side. And uh, the slow and sear is really no difference. As far as uh, controlling the bottom vent, now Weber did an upgrade here and I, and I finally figured this out, is that uh, they've changed this around so they've got a little bit better idea as to this is your smoke setting and this is uh, totally closed and this is fully open. The, uh, the slow and sear has got, you know, obviously they've got off and then they've got uh, open on either side. So it's, it's a little, it's pretty clear on both of them which way is open, which way is closed. All right, getting to the tires on them, they're, they're both about eight inch tires. They're about the same as far as concern there. Uh, obviously the rack, because there's four legs on the s and has got more space down there for storage. Uh, I've, I've never used them, so it doesn't make any difference to me, but there is a difference in stability. Now this has been contention I've had with Weber for quite some time. And it's, you know, it doesn't revolve around three legs possibly, but the, uh, the gauge of metal they use in those posts are really kind of flimsy. And you can see the whole thing shakes. Now, if you go over to the uh, s and pretty solid. I like that a lot. All right, temp probe on the s and Looks like it goes over 700. Temp probe on the Weber looks like it goes about to 700. Probably not a big deal. All right, the daisy wheel on the uh, Weber, this is a standard daisy wheel. It does have the cool touch, so no modification needed there. And on the s and it has a removable one, which I like because it's easier to clean. Uh, it just seems a little bit more flimsy as opposed to the Weber, and it does have the cool touch, to cool touch handle on there. All right, the handle on the top of the grill on the s and is, you know, it's nice. On the uh, Weber, oh, there isn't on the Weber because they've got the hinge, and there's your handle right there, but you can take it off. And then they give you a cool touch over here also, like I said, it's just that thumb screw, and then you do this while the lid is open and it slides right off. It's, it's, I showed you in the other, other videos, folks, it works pretty neat. All right, let's start looking at the inside of the grill, folks. So the great on the Weber is uh, their um, Master Touch series, has a re the removable uh, insert that comes out there. You can get a whole bunch of stuff to get in there, uh, but this is the way it comes, and uh, it's, it works. It's, 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 a, it's a Weber product, it's a great grade. On the s and side, they build theirs to fit the Sloan Sear. So when you open it up, you have full access to your Sloan Sear. It works just fine. All right, let's go past all the attachments, get down to the charcoal grate. This is on the Weber, 17 inches across. It's your standard one. Uh, on the s and it's 18, 18 inches across. Give you a little bit more room, but it's also porcelain coated. So 
that doesn't rust down there. I, I think I've gotten a few grills over the years that I've picked up used Weber's and the, the charcoal grate is one thing I've always had to replace. All right, quite a difference between the s and and the Weber when it comes to the, the ash cleaner and what it's used to close the vents. You can see the vents are different on the Weber. That's called a pea slot. I just learned that this because it looks like a pea. Uh, there's three bladed. Uh, it goes up a little bit taller than it does on the s and The s and is five bladed and offers five slots. It, you know, they're claiming there's more, more area for oxygen to get in there. You can see that smoke hole over there. Folks, I, you know, I don't know if there's a debate on the two of them. Uh, I, I think they both do their job. Um, I've been told by a couple of people, you gotta be careful. Ash can build up and bridge these gaps on either one of these grills. So if we're doing a long, long cook, like three, four hours or six hours into it, just give your, uh, give your slot a little, a little back and forth and uh, it'll help to keep those, those vents nice and clean. All right, coming back out of the grill, folks, uh, on the s, s you can see I've got my Sloan Sear on there. This grill is kind of built around the Sloan Sear. Sloan Sear is a great uh, accessory. If you have a 22-inch Weber kettle and you want to supercharge it, folks, <laughs> check them out because it really makes a difference. They even have them for 18-inch grills now, and it uh, does a great job. On the, on the Weber, you can see with this one, they do give you, they give you two charcoal baskets. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of them because I've never used them. Uh, but you know, some people, some people like them. So, and they give you another setup. Let's take a look at that setup. All right, here's the other charcoal option that comes with the Weber uh, Master Touch Premium is they've got a charcoal ring here. This is somewhat similar to what you would have on a, a Smoky Mountain, uh, except it's only one hole high. It's about two and a half inches high, 14 inches across. And they've got a diffuser plate here. That's pretty heavy duty. It's pretty nice. Uh, and it's indented, indented there. I covered, I, I covered mine with aluminum foil. You could actually put a little bit of water in there and that's meant to hold the grease. Uh, but uh, that's 18 inches across and it works pretty nice. A lot of people are asking though, can I buy these separately? And right now, if you go, there's nothing at Weber.com and even on their Facebook page, they have stated that uh, if you want these, you gotta buy the grill. And if you want that hinge, because I'd love to put that hinge on another Weber, uh, you gotta buy this grill in order to get the hinge. So hopefully maybe they'll change that in the future. I certainly hope so. I, somebody always asks about uh, warranty. Basically they're, they're pretty much the same 10 years and then it breaks down there with some of the other components being five years and then some of the other components being two years and some of the other components being one year, but they're basically apples to apples when it comes to warranties. All right, talking about the lid a little bit, on the s, &S they send along a gasket, half inch by eighth inch gasket that you apply and just gives you a better seal. Now, I've taken that idea and I've already applied it to the, uh, to the Weber Master Touch Premium here, folks, because it's just a, it's a good idea. All right, so everybody always asks, where are they made? Well, Sloan Sear is not afraid to say theirs comes from China. Weber, I, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, you see a lot of it says that it's made in the USA. I think there is some of it that's made in the USA. They use term marketing terms like globally sourced products. Globally sourced, what does that mean? I, I, to me, that means part of it comes from somewhere else. So I, I don't know. Uh, I think there's part of it of the Weber that's made here, but uh, the s, &S is uh, comes from China. All right, back to the original question, which one would you choose? And I'm asking that to you, which one would you choose? So we went through it, I've done a bunch of videos on both these grills. I've been as unbiased as I could possibly be uh, when it comes to either one of these grills and just showing you what's out there. So in the comments section, why don't you tell me which one would you take? And folks, it truly, like I said, it truly is a David versus Goliath. You've got the emperor of Weber, of kettles is Weber throughout the world. And then you got this little itty bitty company that says, you know what, we think we can make one and make it better. Are there things better on that grill? Yeah, there is. Are there things cooler on this grill than there? Yeah, there is. Which one would I choose? Folks, right now, I'd probably go with the s, &S. I, I love that shelf. I, when I did meatloaf the other night on this one, I had to set the meatloaf <laughs> on a plate on the ground. I just didn't have that. Is that hinge really cool? Oh, heck yeah. You know, what I wish they would uh, do something with the vents, 
and have the temp probe and the vent on the indirect side. But I understand what they did. However, I do understand it. You know, can you do things better? Yes. Solve something like this. This is a simple fix right here. Why? Just don't do that. And it's for competition, man. Come on. So yes, I would go with the slow ones here. Just, uh, you know, and if you're going price-wise, you know, they're probably pretty close if you add a slow and sear package and put it in there. And then the prices are pretty doggone close to both, to, you know, with the both of them. So, folks, I hope this was helpful. Like I said, Tom Horseman at YouTube. Appreciate you watching. You know, leave your comments down below. Which one would you choose? Thanks for watching, folks.